My name is Erin Driver Lynn, and I am no longer the director of HILT. <laughs> yes, I am uh, the uh, Dean for Education at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, best school in the entire university. <laughs> it's got an amazing, amazing mission, amazing students, amazing faculty. I'm having a great time five weeks in. Um, I have the honor of introducing our new president. Uh, many of you will have been reading lots about him. Uh, many of you will be attending his inauguration and you'll hear more about him. There's a bio in the program, so I'm not going to do the standard introduction. I will tell you a little story about the first time I met uh, President Bacow. It was uh, in 2011, and he will not remember this one. He remembers a lot of things, but he will not remember this one. It was at a, um, uh, a kind of event, and there was a buffet table, and I was talking with a friend of mine, and she said, that's Larry Bacow. And I said, oh, and she, she said, do you know who he is? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> she said, uh, just joined the corporation, um, former president of Tufts, uh, used to be at MIT. I was like, oh, wow, I probably should have known who he was. Um, she said, I want to say hi. Do you think that would be too forward? I said, I don't know. Do you, do you know him? And she's like, a little bit. Um, but I think he remembers people. And I think it'd be OK. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then she said, he's the kind of person I want to work for. And I said, why? And she said, because I'd learn a lot. And I said, in a good way? Um, and she said, absolutely in a good way. Um, he is through and through an educator. And no offense, um, not in that like teaching and learning way. Um, but really, he knows stuff. He's a role model, and he gets stuff done. And I, um, I really remembered that. Uh, she, she interrupted him as he was loading up his plate <laughs> and reintroduced herself and introduced me quickly, and I gracefully left. But I remembered that, um, you know, all of those components, the educator through and through, not in the teaching and learning way, which is kind of interesting, and, um, and that, you know, he, he deeply cares about learning and teaching, and it's part of who he is. And so we invited him to our first Hilt conference, and he said yes, and he came quickly. And I mean, he answered quickly. Not everybody does. <laughs> um, since he's been more part of my Mattering Map, um, I've had the great occasion of working with him several times. And the thing is, so many of you have also had that. And it's another part of my observation here, which is that he, President Bacow, um, engages. He shows up. He uh, is involved. He is constantly learning from all of us, from every interaction. And he's constantly teaching. And I am really excited about this next phase of Harvard's uh, history and uh, what we're going to do with this institution in this um, next era. And I am happy that he is at the helm, and you'll have to forgive me for this. I hope he also has a hand on the hilt. Um, <laughs> please join me in welcoming President Bacow. Wow. Um, I've been introduced quite a few times uh, recently, you know, here at Harvard and elsewhere, but I don't think I've ever had an introduction quite as nice or as personal as that one, Aaron. So uh, thank you very, very much. It's, it's really great to be here on so many different levels. Um, as Aaron said, um, I, I was present here at the very first um, HILT conference. And you know, Aaron really helped to bring this whole enterprise into the world. And when you know, we think about what we do with our lives and what we accomplish and, and the people that we influence, Aaron, through your good work, through helping to elevate teaching and learning on the agenda for Harvard, um, you've had a profound impact on a place 
um, that I think uh, really matters. And I think all of us should thank you at this point for helping to make this, this happen. Um, but nobody gets anything done on their own. Um, and there are other people um, who've been involved uh, uh, here as well. And I just want to take a minute and acknowledge uh, Peter Boll, uh, Harvard's first vice provost for advances in learning. And I also want to acknowledge his successor, uh, uh, and that's Bharat Anand and his colleague Dustin Tingley, who I think are going to continue the great work uh, that Peter and that uh, Aaron have really uh, started on our, our behalf. As I like to say, nothing succeeds in life like a successor. Uh, so, and we are fortunate that we, that we have good ones uh, here. As uh, Aaron mentioned, and I also just alluded to, I was fortunate to be here for the very uh, first uh, uh, HILT uh, conference in 2012. What she didn't mention, though, is that that was actually my first public appearance as a member of the Harvard Corporation anywhere. Uh, so this is where I, that's my, my coming out as a corporation member. And I remember serving on a panel um, with Young Mi Moon, um, with Alan Garber, uh, and with Michael Sandel. And in retrospect, the title of the panel was quite prescient uh, because it said it was entitled, you remember this? Looking to the future. Um, now, I must say, I could not have imagined this future <laughs> um, at the time, but uh, as I often say to my students, uh, the best piece of career advice I can give them is to recognize opportunity when it walks up and hits you in the face. Uh, uh, and in the interest of full disclosure, I did not go looking for this job, but I also could not turn away from it because these are difficult and challenging times for higher education. I see this as an opportunity not just to lead Harvard, but to be an advocate for the enduring values of colleges and universities and higher education more broadly as enablers of the American dream uh, for so many of us. And, and I would hope that all of you would see that um, as part of your work, your mission as well in trying to advance um, uh, teaching and learning. Um, but here I am, I should also disclose to you that, you know, uh, this is the Harvard Initiative for Learning and Teaching, but it was really kicked off by uh, two extraordinary people, Gus and Rita Hauser, whose gift made this possible. And in the, again, the, you know, the world is connected in very interesting ways. Um, I was the first Hauser leader in residence at the Kennedy School after I stepped down as president uh, of Tufts. And so I remember at the Hilt Conference thanking Gus and Rita for their generous gift, which made all this good work possible. Uh, and uh, now I, uh, then I had a second opportunity to thank them um, when I was appointed as the Hauser leader in residence. And, and now that while they're not here, maybe they're watching, because Rita's very good at watching things online. Um, Gus and Rita, thank you again for uh, all that you have, you've made uh, possible. Um, I was talking to Bob Carey, who you will hear from uh, a little bit later uh, today about some of the challenges that we face in higher education is we face as Harvard. And one of them is that we are perceived as elite um, at a time in which that has become a dirty word in the United States. Uh, in fact, I like to say the only thing which seems to be an appropriate um, word to be modified by elite is quarterback. You know, to be an elite university is bad, to have an elite quarterback, that's okay. People like that. Um, and, you know, I prefer to think that what we stand for is not elite, but rather we stand for excellence. We, we stand for excellence in everything that we do here. And one of the things which I feel so good about with respect to Hilt is that you have really elevated our commitment to excellence uh, in teaching and learning. And just looking at what's happened in the seven years since the very first conference, um, people are talking about how do students learn. We've 
digging into data, we're mucking around at, in, in trying to understand the information, the meaning of all the clicks and the online work that's being done and, and sorting through the big data that way. In thinking about how we teach, especially with technology, it's forced us to reflect much harder about how we organize our information and what are our students actually learning. And so I think this is an incredibly interesting time at Harvard as faculty and students and staff and others are really focused in, in a very concentrated, deep way in trying to understand how we can do a better job to help our students learn, how we understand different ways in which our students learn, because one of the things which we, which we appreciate to a much greater degree is that not all students learn the same way. How do we adapt our teaching so that, uh, and now I will use uh, an MIT term, there's a far better impedance match between the, you know, what we're trying to, the information we're trying to convey and the way in which our students understand it. We become sensitive um, to, to all of those things and as a result, I think we're a much better institution as a result. But I want to issue a challenge for all of you uh, today in your work. And the challenge is this, reality is only a very, very small number of students are ever going to study at Harvard. And so the challenge is, how do we think about what we are doing here and what we are learning here? How can we ensure that that benefits all of the students who are seeking to get an education in the United States? Four out of five kids in the U.S. are going to be educated at the great public universities of America. And I think it's imperative that we take on as our responsibility that what we do here translates elsewhere, that we reach out, we extend ourselves, we try and help other institutions, and that we do so as true partners, okay? Not we're from Harvard and we figured out how to do it and here we are, but rather where we engage with other institutions as humble partners, as generous partners, where we try to learn from them and we try to share what we have learned here with them as well. That is a true partnership. Because we need to ensure that the lessons that we learn here benefit and help everybody and the education of students who will never set foot in Harvard Yard, never even see um, the city of Cambridge. So today I ask that you begin thinking through some of these questions, some of these critical issues, which are so important, I think, um, for all of us in higher education, for the values that we stand for, and I hope you will also help to join me as we seek to try and change this narrative about higher education, that to help people understand that we exist not to make Harvard rate great, but rather to make the world better. Uh, and that that ultimately is what we are doing here today. So thank you very much for um, in, inviting me to join you. Um, good luck with the work that you will do today. I'm sorry that my schedule will not permit me to sit in and attend, but uh, I have the privilege of ending my day with, uh, with Erin, <laughs> wearing her other hat at the School of Public Health, and she's told me that she's gonna give me a full and complete report um, on your conversations. So uh, thank you all very much and have a great day. Take care.